Hi everyone, Howard here from Lounge Academy. Welcome. This is uh, this is going to be mindless piano practice session. It is not live. I might post it. One thing good about doing this for you guys, my, the idea of this is that I'll. I'll you know, get a half hour of this in. And if, if you guys are watching, it kind of makes me like, I was looking for this, get the whole half hour in without, you know, taking too many breaks, screwing around. It's good to have somebody looking over your shoulder, isn't it? That and a deadline are the two biggest forces on earth, right? That was kind of new. Maybe it'll develop into something. Reminds me of something Jocko used to do, kind of in a paraphrase sort of way. Can a guy go on dreaming? next to mine so I kissed him you didn't mind it at all when I'm awake such a break never happens how long can a guy go on dreaming if there's a chance that you care then we say you do my baby say it and make my make my crazy dreams come true Crazy Dreams Come True by watching Lounge Academy every Friday night on Facebook.
Kaya was commenting on my live stream practice from yesterday. Kaya, you were asking about fingering for, uh, for these chromatics. You know, I really don't think about it. I probably should, it'd probably be better if I did, but I used to think about it. I used to be methodical about it. I found, I just try to do random stuff, you know? So I've got, I got various ways of doing it. I mean, there's, there's probably this traditional way. I put my ring finger on the, like on the B flat. So you got, I think that's probably the way everybody does them. See, so, so you got these, so you got these three, you know, this group of four, and then this group of three, and then I think I do a three to one here, and then three, these three. So it's four, and then group of three, and then a group of two, and then a group of three, and then a group of four, three, two, three. That's probably pretty standard fingering, I would think, right, for you guys. So I do that, but then I then I also do um, do it completely wrong. And yeah, sometimes I think I'm doing. I've noticed that too. Sometimes I'm doing two fingers somehow. I don't know. I don't. I kind of purposely don't think about that. I'm trying to. It's working. It's um. Slowly over time, very slowly, it's getting better and better. What I would do, instead of worrying about fingers too much, or too strictly, play chords in the left hand, do, just do some changes, and just, just keep playing chromatically. It's actually harder to stay in one position. I mean, you can go up, you can come down. But it's, you know, if you don't, if you, if you try to just move up and down in tighter and tighter little bands, it gets interesting. Some of it's a motion, like here. This is a good motion, going like this. Instead of thinking of fingers, it's motion, waving your hand across it. And I, n I never really think of I worry about being clean, which is kind of obvious by the results, but lots of times I do get very clean results. And you know, if I, if I pull it in, you know, because I don't want, you know, I'm trying to like keep it within the realm of sounding normal in case there's people listening or, you know, it counts. And you pull it back a little bit. I, I, I find um, they, they're get, they get cleaner and cleaner. And then there's different ways of it. I like to attack them different ways. You know, if you think of the, the attack the bebop players had, they've got that sound, just the way they hit the note. It's a little more percussive and a little more kind of staccato-ish. Not exactly, but that's part of it. They get kind of a thing, you know, if you listen to Bud Powell and those guys, it's, it's real obvious, you know, they got that. They all, they all even they all do it. All the linear players. You almost got to think of every note like like it's coming a little bit from your wrist. But not all the time. Just when you're in that mode, 
So that's what I'm trying to say is there's different ways of doing. And you, if you, you, I, I kind of like when you go between different, um, different ways of attacking the notes while you're doing, doing something. See, do it like uh, more legato, like this. Kind of a, you know, then, then, then you can finish it up. Mix them up. Those just those slightly different styles. Thing. It's hard to turn around, you know, you try to you try to change direction at different points, you know. And you, of course you, you cheat and you do the ones that are easy for you, but as as you screw around with these, you get better at more and more uh, turnaround points and you just find more pathways through them. I think uh, chromatics are always just the best investment. I started with chromatics, like when I developed my, what I call, I named it my baby talk system for how to learn to improvise. And because I, you know, I was kind of starting from, from, from the start, I reasoned that if I was going to improvise lines and I did chromatics, I figured, well, the chromatics will always be useful to know and with a limited, you know, harmonic application ability at that stage, you didn't have to think about it too much. About what goes with a chord, chromatics fit anything. You could just kind of put it in context with your ear, how, how you treat it when you're playing. So you could start on any note, no matter what chord you're in. That's kind of a fun thing to do. Never. Let's try that. Okay, we'll be in. Uh... All right, we'll stay in F here. We'll just kind of do some progressions in F, like I've been doing. Right, these. And then we'll go into chromatics. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to hit arbitrarily what note I start a chromatic run on, and then just using context after the fact, put it into context. So it sounds like it was, so it sounds like it was right. doing that, try starting a run. Started on E.
started on, when I start on F, I'll try A flat. Doesn't matter. I won't look at what I'm starting it on. That was a thumb, I was attempting it, but I missed it. That was the thumb thing you were asking about, Gaia. That was, that was a, a thumb gliss while I'm playing notes, black notes with fingers, I glissed with the thumb. And I, I did not originate that. And I did not hear it on a record, but I, I read it. <laughs> I read that Art Tatum did that. So I, I went, so I, I tried it. It's a neat trick. And then I, and I, I finally, uh, you know, just got it, got it into my hand to where when I do certain things, I do that, like just a, like what would be a, some kind of a scale. What is that, B or something? I don't even know, man, I'm getting weak on my theory. Forgetting my basic scales. But anyway, this one. <laughs> what, what you do is since the fingers are all on the uh, black notes, on the thumb it only hits F and C. Yeah. See? So it's fun to just drag your thumb as you do this. You have to do a few notes like that. Yeah, you picked up on it. You picked up on everything, Gaia. That could be taken, I'm sure, so much further than I do it. But I do, I do use it. Now you got me thinking about it. request by my other subscriber from Jim. I think it was the nearness of you. Let me see if it's in this book. He wanted me to do a solo on it. I never planned on those. Let's see. Is it even in this book? I don't think it's in this book. I don't know the changes by heart. It's not the pale moon that delights me, that thrills and excites me. Is that it? Oh no. It's not the nearness, it's the nearness of you. Page 254 in your songbooks, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure I got the right song. Let 
Oh, uh, I have to hook. I, I'm pretty sure Jim Parker wanted the nearness of you. James Parker, appreciate it. I think I have, like, I've got a whole 38 subscribers. But that's for all my topics of interest. For music, I think I've got about three. Which is fine, you know, because I got the top three. I got Jim Parker, who's a great guy. We've got Gaia. You can't beat that. And Ken McGuire. I mean, who needs more subscribers than that, right? The rest would just be filler. These are the most talented people I know. Oh, okay, this is not an F, it's an E flat. Intros are first so you can practice the song. <laughs> Little pro tip there. That's why people play intros, because they're learning the song. Thank you. 
the soft lights to enchant me. Thank you, Jim Parker, for requesting this song. I was trying to pour in more of the stuff, the soup that we've been cooking in our 30 minutes of random playing, but I'm I just didn't feel sharp enough to do too much of that. I've been skipping too many days. Can't skip a day, you can't skip a single day. I'm never gonna skip a day again. We'll see, I'll try to do that to demonstrate how you make the soup. You make the stock, okay? You do your random practicing every day where you're not playing songs, you're just, you're playing around with keys, okay? So you're, this one happened to be an E flat. I haven't been playing around with E flat enough. That might be one of the reasons I didn't have so many tricks to throw in. And E flat is the people's key. It should not be ignored. Not the pale moon delights me. It thrills and delights me. Oh no. It's just the nearness of you. Anyway, so that's, that's a, it's just a different mental approach, philosophical approach, mental approach of um, arrangements, you know, rather than kind of like a carefully plotted compositional. That's what I used to do. Like in the, when I first learned this stuff years ago, and, and I, I never liked the results for me, because it, it just wasn't playing to my strengths, which were very few and far between. Anyway, but um, I'd be thinking of this, and I'd be going, man, how would I like to do something? I like to have, you know, you start out, what you do. And I was just thinking of, like, devices, you know? So you'd start out, and you want to maybe do swing, a, a swing bass, you know, kind of a swing bass. Just the, the approach was, you know, to where I think, well, I'm, around the turnaround, you know, like Tatum always did that. He'd, he'd do all these different things, but then at the turnaround, he goes back to a swing bass. 
kind of a stride, I, I should say. And then he does the turnaround and kind of brings it all home again with a stride. Anyway, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to convey my thesis, which is um, in, instead of like thinking like an arranger when you're, when you're putting together your arrangements, is um, go back to your, your stock, your soup stock. You know, where you, where you, you just, you just kind of noodle around for a half hour a day on a few, a few different keys, common, pick the common keys, go through them, E flat, F, C, G, no key at all, just go around and play around with landing in different key centers and stuff and moving around. And you develop just your own junk, you know? You develop things that um, start to become, make sense to your own ear. They're, they're, they start out as not making a lot of sense, but then they start, it starts to become a vocabulary that makes sense to you and to whoever's listening to it. It's just kind of the magic of what happens, you know? And you've got these different devices in there that you're doing, chromatics and stride and um, different ways of attacking the keys for different effects and uh, stylistic things. And, and then when you, when you do a, a song out of a book, you you just kind of you you just pour that in. It's you. You pour you in. There's nothing better than it sounding like you. You know, it may not be as uh, clever and and traditionally. I don't know. On paper, it might not be as beautiful, but people want to hear hear you. They'd rather hear you making mistakes and sounding like it's, you know. That you're, it's just uh, coming through you. Um, I think, I think that's the trick to all this stuff is just to, uh, you know, people they talk about, they use terms like sounding authentic, sounding honest, and you're going, what the hell are they talking about? You know, that I think that's what they're talking about. I think you know, it's, you know, what when you hear it, and it, it's, it's hard to put into words, and that's what makes. Uh, stuff kind of magical to us to, to where we're interested in hearing more of it. You know, that unexplainable. We don't know why we like it. Thanks for this great song request by Hoagie Carmichael. Words by Ned Washington. The Nearness of You from Paramount Pictures' Romance in the Dark. play that song on a Friday. The nearness of you. See you next time. <laughs>